All right, good morning. My name is Justin Brooks, Safety Advisor for the SCSA, and welcome to Toolbox Tuesday. So before I start up my presentation here on my computer, I just want to take a moment to discuss a few items before we get going. This toolbox is being recorded and will be available for later viewing on Facebook and our YouTube channel. So if you're not following our social media accounts, make sure that after this webinar or after this toolbox, I've been doing a lot of webinars, you give this video a like and a share and follow our pages to keep up to date on safety in Saskatchewan. So today we are going to be talking about harassment. Uh, so I've got a PowerPoint here and then at the end of the PowerPoint, I actually have uh, two videos and I'll explain where you can get those from after. Uh, and you can use these videos uh, for some training and, uh, and some discussion with your employees and your work group. So I will just get my screen shared here. All right, so we are gonna be talking about harassment here today. So there's a strong connection between the health and well-being of people and their work environments. When people feel valued, respected, and satisfied in their jobs and work in safe, healthy environments, they're more likely to be productive and committed to their work. When the workplace is unsafe, stressful, or unhealthy, ultimately, both the organization and the employees are hurt. According to the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety, workplace bullying and harassment usually involves a pattern of behaviours mentally hurt or isolate a person and can be both obvious and subtle. Workers who are being targeted can be subjected to any combination of rumors, intimidation, threats, littling, profanity, among other actions. So the following information on this slide was taken from the Smith School of Business. So let's look at who the targets of harassment are and who's responsible. I'm just gonna be looking at my monitor here where this is a little bit larger. Uh, so when we look at by gender, uh, we see that 31% uh, are women, 22% are male, the rest are unidentified. Uh, when we look at by occupation, the highest level is manual worker. So these are people that fall right into uh, our rate codes of the uh, residential, commercial, and industrial construction. 31% are professional, 29% are service providers. So, you know, these are people that, especially during right now, during the holiday seasons, uh, when tensions are high, considering especially what everyone here in the world is going through, uh, those retail workers are really facing the burden of that. 28% are office workers, 25% are science tech workers, 23% manager owners, 19% again salesperson, right? So that falls right in that midst of service provider uh, and salesperson, you know, we, we when we look at that, we're looking at more like car salesman uh, type, uh, not necessarily service provider. So when we look at income, income does play uh, a large part in this. When we're looking at that greater than 100,000 mark, uh, we're around that 21%. Uh, and when we look at that less than 40,000, they seem to be a lot more susceptible to harassment. When we look at the by region, just above that, BC is at, sits at 35%, Alberta, 31 Manitoba and Saskatchewan are kind of lumped together here at 27% which considering uh, the, the amount of mass, land mass there is fairly low, but still here would be uh, a lot better. 25% in Ontario, 22% Quebec, 19% in Atlantic Canada. And then who is responsible for harassment? We see that 42% male, 23% female, and both male and female as, as a group together, 35%. So this is more of an, people that are in a group dynamic, right? Not just one single person. So there are two types of harassment covered under the Saskatchewan Employment Act. This is harassment based on prohibited grounds and personal harassment. So let's go through these. Harassment based on prohibited grounds. Harassment based on prohibited grounds includes any inappropriate conduct, comment, display, action, or gesture by a person that is made on the basis of race, creed, religion, color, sex, sexual orientation, marital status, family status, disability, physical size or weight, age, nationality, ancestry, or place of origin, and constitutes a threat to the health and safety of the worker. This type of harassment also extends to sexual harassment, which is a conduct, comment, gesture, or contact of a sexual nature that is offensive, unsolicited, or unwelcome. It can include direct or implied threat of reprisal for refusing to comply with sexually orientated requests, unwelcome remarks, jokes, innuendos, propositions, or taunting, about a person's body, attire, sex, or sexual orientation, displaying pornographic or sexually explicit pictures or materials, unwelcome physical contact, unwelcome invitations or requests, 
direct or indirect to engage in behavior of a sexual nature or refusing to work with or have contact with workers because of their sex, gender, or sexual orientation. Certain types of conduct not specifically directed at an individual, such as displaying a poster or making comments that are overheard by another worker, which is also known as third-party harassment, can be considered harassment based on prohibited grounds. Then we get into personal harassment. Personal harassment is sometimes referred to as bullying. It can include any inappropriate conduct, comment, display, action, or gesture by a person that adversely affects a worker's psychological or physical well-being. The perpetrator knows or should know what, what caused the worker to be humiliated or intimidated and constitutes a threat to the health and safety of a worker. Typically, personal harassment involves repeat occurrences. A single incident may also constitute personal harassment, serious or severe, and is shown to have a lasting harmful effect on the worker. Personal harassment may include verbal or written abuse or threats, insulting, derogatory or degrading comments, jokes or gestures, personal ridicule, ridicule or malicious gossip, malicious or unjustifiable interference with another's work, work sabotage, refusing to work or cooperate with others, or interference with or vandalism of personal property. All incidents of inappropriate conduct should be appropriately addressed to ensure the wor workplace remains respectful and harassment free. So let me get into what it's not. Day-to-day -day management or supervisory decisions are not considered to be harassment, even if they sometimes involve unpleasant consequences. These include work assignments, job assessments and evaluations, workplace inspections, implementation of appropriate dress codes and disciplinary actions. Managerial actions must be carried out in a manner that is reasonable and not abusive. Responsibilities of employer and employees. All employees, including managers and supervisors, have a responsibility to ensure appropriate conduct in the workplace. Employees are required to refrain from causing or participating in the harassment of another worker. They must also cooperate with harassment complaint investigations. Employers have the responsibility in ensuring a harassment-free workplace. By law, an employer must develop and implement a written harassment policy that meets the requirements of the law and ensure as much, much as reasonably practicable that the employees are not exposed to harassment in the workplace. So this may include harassment that occurs outside of regular work hours and locations. So for example, employer-sponsored social events or conferences, or it's perpetrated by a third-party client. So this is like a customer or a client, so something like that. So creating and maintaining a harassment-free workplace takes commitment. Good management practices can help create a respectful workplace, including providing clear direction on roles, tasks, and expectations to avoid misunderstandings, demonstrating leadership and conflict management, promoting respect in the workplace, developing and implementing a harassment policy, acting promptly to end harassment, and hosting information meetings and training on harassment prevention. The Saskatchewan Employment Act requires all employers to develop and implement a harassment policy within their workplace. The Harassment Prevention Guide shows employers how to develop a harassment policy what needs to be included in harassment policy, best practices to use when dealing with harassment, and sample harassment policies, forms, and statements. The harassment Prevention Guide can be downloaded at the Government of Saskatchewan webpage under Bullying and Harassment in the Workplace. Awareness and commitment to harassment-free workplace can be encouraged in a variety of ways. Employers should promote awareness through information meeting and training on harassment prevention. Training can include rights and responsibilities workers have under the Saskatchewan Employment Act, behaviors prohibited by the harassment policy, including behaviors by third parties that will not be tolerated, tips for, for helping create a respectful workplace, videos, publications, and reference material on harassment prevention. You can also get a hold of an advisor and we can guide you uh, in some of the courses that the SCSA offers as well. Reporting harassment. If you've experienced or observed harassment in your workplace, you must report it to your employer to first to try and resolve the issue internally. Reference your company's harassment policy for information on reporting options investigation processes. If you don't have a harassment policy and don't know where to begin, contact us at Advisory Services and we can help you out with either a policy or just guiding you in the right direction to the information uh, on the Saskatchewan government website. As a worker, you have the right to request the assistance of Occupational Health and Safety, OHS Division, under the Occupational Health and Safety Act, particularly Sections 4 and 5, the Occupational Health and Safety Regulations 1996, 
particularly Section 36.1. If your employer has failed to take reasonable steps to address the issue, you can ask for help by contacting OHS at the number provided on the screen. A worker may also file a complaint with the Saskatchewan Human Rights Commission under the Saskatchewan Human Rights Code, particularly Section 16, 17, 18, and 27. A worker retains the right to exercise any other legal avenues available to them. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to now watch these videos on the scenarios. Uh, we're going to take a look at two different videos. So both these videos are available on the Government of Saskatchewan website uh, under the bullying and harassment in the workplace. So the first video depicts personal harassment by a manager. So when watching these videos, either by yourself or with your crew, ask yourself and discuss with others. Were the following actions by the manager justified? What do you think the employer was feeling? How would you handle the situation? And what would the next steps be? Yes, my name is Jennifer. I've been with this office for 11 years now. I like the people that are here. I like that. This job requires a lot of attention to detail, and I take my job very seriously. My name is Lorraine. I've actually just started here maybe about eight months ago, and uh, I love this place. It's great. My boss is amazing. Uh, she's the one that promoted me, so you know what? I just love the lady. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Michelle. Do you have that budget report that I need for the meeting? Yes, sometime? I do. It's right here. And then I work with Jennifer, who I'm having just a blast with. See, she's such a, an easy person to kid around with, so I, I quite enjoy, uh, you know, playing jokes on it. It was right here. It was. I hope you know how important this is for the meeting. Just for the record, I don't know why, but you two's playing the wrong video, but we're going to watch it anyways. Maybe I'll help look for it. There was an incident where I was looking for a very important file, and she found it. I think these are them. But I suspect that she misplaced it on purpose. Good. It looks like it's all here. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. I can't believe you lost the file. I'm Michelle. I'm the manager of this department, and I have a number of support staff who work directly for me. I've got uh, Jennifer, who's been with me about 11 years. She's efficient. She's uh, very, very on the ball when it comes to getting her work done. Meticulous attention to detail. Uh, the problem is, lately, she's been very distracted, rather disorganized, and I'm not sure what's going on. Since Lorraine has joined our team, I feel that things have changed. To people, she appears to be very nice and sincere, but to me, she just seems to want to sabotage my work. What you doing? When I point out her mistakes, I just love seeing her reaction. Well, but I wasn't wrong. I was in the right. I corrected her and, uh, you know, and she just sat there and didn't say a thing. I find her intimidating and it's just very difficult to work with her. She's been undermining my work. She sends emails to my coworkers attacking my character. Everything is perfect when it comes to her. And you know what? She's not. And when I pointed out that fact, well, you know, I'm sorry, so she got her nose a little out of joint. But at the very end, uh, I look better and that's the important thing. You should have seen what I did to Jennifer yesterday. I got into her files and I... I actually heard her on the phone and she admitted to the person she was talking to that she messed up my files. And she was laughing about it. I on her face when I walked around the corner and I... I was shocked initially and I was very hurt. I could not believe that Lorraine would do that. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Michelle. May I talk to you for a couple of minutes? Sure, come on in. Hi. It's about Lorraine. What's up? There's a bit of dissension between the two of them, but I think it's a test of character to see which of them is, is going to handle it the best. They're just going to have to work it out between the two of them and see, uh, see how they manage that. Okay. I'm at my wit's end. I, I don't know what to do now. Because if I can't go to my boss, then, then what do I do? Harassment in the workplace is not acceptable. Healthy and safe workplaces benefit us all. All right, so even though it played, it still played a video out of the series, it just wasn't the one that I wanted, which is not a big deal. 
Uh, so this one dealt between uh, harassment between coworkers. So again, uh, the same questions uh, would be asked is were the following of the actions by the manager justified? Should they have, uh, should the way that she dealt with, the manager dealt with the uh, both of the coworkers and the situation that she had laid out for them, was that the right thing? Uh, how do you think that the, the first person was feeling that was being harassed? How would you have handled that situation? And what do you think the next steps would be? My name is Tara and I'm a computer tech. I've been working at Gary's Computer Store for a few months now. My name is Gary and uh, I've owned this store for 15 years, built it from the ground up and we have managed to stay alive against some pretty nasty competition because we pay attention to detail here. We get the job done, we get it done right the first time, customers keep coming back. Yeah, if you have any problems with your laptop, just give the shop a call and you can ask for Tara, okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay, bye. Don't say that. We don't send computers out of the shop if we think there might be any problems. I told you this before. I get along well with the other staff members, except for my boss. Uh, he seems to always be sort of looking over my shoulder and checking up on me and doesn't really have anything positive to say. And I think all of that stems from an incident that happened shortly after I was hired. This is my entire life in here. I'm How could sorry, you mess I something like this up? I have I, everything in here. I, I is there a problem? Some of the what files happened? were were corrupted. When this I was, was a simple a job. That's why I gave it to you. I lost some of the data. It it happens sometimes. Gary berated me in front of the customer, came down really hard on me, threatened to fire me on the spot. I managed to convince him to give me another chance, but ever since that day it seems like he's just waiting for me to make a mistake. You know, after that, I just felt like it was hard to trust that she could get even the simplest jobs done. You know, the other guys here, I can I can hand them a job and I don't have to check back until it's over with her. I kind of feel like I have to be hovering in the background all the time. It just seems like uh, Tara's unable to take any job from start to finish and do it on her own. She's always looking for help in a manual or from another employee. We just don't have time for that. Not here, not with the workload we've got. Tara! Leave Trevor alone. He's got enough work to do today. We shouldn't have to babysit you now. You've been here long enough. You should be on your own two feet. I think it's it's just really unfair. When one of the other guys in the shop comes to help me out, Gary always jumps in and gets very upset, you know, that I'm wasting his time. And, you know, the guys, they help each other out all the time, and it's not a big deal. And I don't know why he's always so hard on me. Good, I'll be done. In yeah, I finished a project, and to my knowledge, it was 100% perfect, ready to go. Gary looked at it, said I had made a mistake again, and wouldn't tell me what I had done wrong or what I needed to fix. So I went home, I didn't get any sleep, I stayed awake all night, running it over in my mind. And I was just terrified to come into work today because I didn't know what was going to happen. And Gary isn't here yet, and I don't know when he gets here if I'm going to get fired or get yelled at. I just, I don't know. Harassment in the workplace is not acceptable. Healthy and safe. All right, so that was the first video that I wanted to play. Uh, so that one depicted the uh, harassment by a manager. So again, ask yourself that were the following actions by the manager justified? Uh, how do you think the employee was feeling? What was the manager feeling? If you were the manager, how would you handle that situation? And as a manager or and as the employee in both scenarios, uh, what would the next steps be? All right, so no matter where you work or what you do for a living, everyone deserves to be uh, in, a, in a position where they're, not, they're free from harassment. Um, and that doesn't matter what they do. Uh, we looked at those stats uh, and, and you know, in a perfect world, every one of those would be zero. So it's up to all of us to kind of work together, especially in the situation we're in now and moving forward uh, that we can, we work harder to achieve this outcome. So for more information on this or anything else, of course, feel free to contact an advisor. So that's everything for today. Uh, that's the end of our toolbox talk. So I'd like to thank all of you by watching and participating in these types of, of discussions. Uh, we're all working together to make Saskatchewan the safest construction environment in Canada. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. We have a very special webinar. Uh, we have uh, much like our executive series that we did before, uh, we're having the Geo Party uh, trivia contest again. So make sure you guys tune in for that and uh, we'll see you at noon tomorrow for that. Thank you very much.